So I assume you've watched the Jack Overview video. And in this video, we're gonna go over all of the awesome things you can do with Jack Borders. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in on that. Okay, so here we are inside the Borders page inside the Jack Demo Project, which you can get anywhere you want, on my doc portal, on the disk image where you originally purchased Jack, okay? So the first thing we're gonna look at is border styles. And there are eight default border styles that you can configure with Jack, okay? And they're really easy to configure. The border style option is directly in the middle of the border section, uh, where you can obviously set one of any of these border styles. Now, if you really wanted to get crazy, you can actually do a detailed border style and actually have different styles for each side of the stack. This could be interesting, maybe if you wanted like, a, you know, solid borders on the top and bottom and maybe dashed on the sides. I don't know. I can't think of a good use case for it, but I'm sure some people will, will think of one. Now, towards the top, obviously, you can configure the color of that, um, the opacity of the border, and then the border size. Okay. Um, and just as with the border style, you can do a detailed border size. And then you can choose um, the size for each top, bottom, left, and right. Now you can even do a little bit further and use some responsive sizing as well. Um, so you can try doing, you know, a rem border where it will actually be a little bit smaller on mobile than it will be on desktop, right? So uh, you can play around with those to see if it gets the effect that you're looking for. Now with transparent borders, um, I kind of recommend, I personally feel that solid borders really make the best transparent borders. Now, if we look at these examples here that I've built, um, you'll notice that I've done a few things. So for this kind of this stitched look on this uh, particular example, I have two jack stacks. I have one that has a background um, that I added some padding to, and then I, I have a second one that actually has the stitched around it that has no background. So this is how we can actually get kind of that, you know, fabric stitch look where we have a background and then further in inside where the borders are all the way on the outside, um, you know, we have a nice border look. Uh, so that's accomplished by layering multiple jacks. And we'll see similar effects uh, that we've gotten here. Like in the this inset example here, it kind of looks great if I have um, the inset on top of something where it actually, we notice that this inner jack stack looks like it's inset inside the other one, right? Uh, in this example with the double, um, it allows us to actually have um, some color definition inside of the double um, border when we have a con some content behind it, right? Otherwise, it, the color of whatever's behind it is gonna bleed through. In this example, um, it's kind of hard to see in edit mode. We'll notice that we, um, you know, we can have a pattern border. It's it's a little it's a little fib, right? It's not really adding a pattern to the border, but what it's doing is we have a jack stack in the background that has zero padding and margins with a background. Then we have a jack stack inside of it that has transparent borders that. And then because the borders are transparent on the inner jack stack, the background is bleeding through on just the borders because the background inside the inner jack stack is 100% opaque. So as you see, if you play around with layering jacks, um, you can really get some great effects. Now next up is rounding corners. Now the easy implementation of this is just to set rounded corners to a particular percentage uh, or pixels and then it just gets nice smooth round corners, right? But we can do a, some more elaborate things here. And if we look at this particular stack, we notice that the left side doesn't have any rounded corners, but the right side does. And this is accomplished by using the detailed rounding and allows us to actually define um, a pixel width, or you know, we're doing 100% pixel radius on both the top right and the bottom right corner. 
Now you also notice that we allow different percentages and these are useful for creating circles and other shapes. If you want to have a jack with a circle, essentially what you want to do is you want to set the percentage rounding to 50% on all sides. This alone will not give you a circle. You're actually also going to have to make sure that you, uh, inside your jack layout settings, set the height proportional to be one to one because you have to have a square and then when you round the corners, you then get a circle. If you don't do the proportional, basically you'll end up with a pillbox. So in this example here, um, I have a 50 pixel uh, border radius set and then I don't have any sort of uh, width or height constraints. So it's just, it's gonna remain a rectangle and then I have my, my rounded corners around it. Now, if you want to get crazy, you can even go a little bit farther and then do kind of unique shapes. Where here I, I'm using a percentage width with 30% on the uh, top left or top right and bottom left. And then the top left and bottom right are 3%. So we get this you know unique shape. Now, the last feature here for borders is something that is really amazing. It is Jack's responsive frames. And basically what this is, is it allows you to define an image that will be scaled around your content. And as the browser is resized, the actual frame will respond with your content. So if we, if we look at this example here, we'll notice that as I shrink my browser down, oops, the frames do change to respond to the content uh, so that it looks great from mobile all the way up to desktop. Now Jack ships with over 50 frames that you can use. And this frame gallery page is a great reference to actually see exactly which frame you might wanna use for your project. And what's great is all of these are number coded and they match the uh, actual frame number that is inside the stacks library. And let's look a little bit on how we implement these frames. So let's look at this example here. We'll notice that I turned on border image. I dragged my border image inside of here. I set the crop size and then I set the repeat. But what does all this mean? So the third button on the stacks, uh, toolbar is your media library. And when you open this, you'll notice that Jack has a bunch of groups for Jack frames and tiles. In this particular example, we used this frame, Art Deco number seven. And what's great is when you highlight this, all you need to do is drag and drop into the stacks image setting. But there's another important piece of information here. If we look at the name of this frame, we'll notice that it has crop 120 inside of the image name. That is the suggested crop size for this particular frame. If we look at a different frame, we'll notice that it has a different recommended crop size. So for this particular frame, it, re it recommended a crop size of 120. Now, based on the frame, you're going to want to play around with the repeat option to see which one will look actually better for your particular frame. Some frames, it doesn't matter. And some, it will drastically change the look of that particular frame. So that is all that I have about Jack borders, right? You think borders are just boring. They're just solid things around your content, but no, you can really make some amazing differences in your layouts just by tweaking the borders. Uh, and of course the border opacity is an amazing feature that uh, will make you a hipster. So, uh, and then responsive image frames. I mean, those are really great. Uh, it's a great way to add an accent uh, you know, to your uh, site that not a lot of people use, mostly because it's, it's not an easy thing to implement. So many, many people don't actually use border images. And Jack makes it really simple for you. 
So thank you very much. I hope you enjoy Jack. I hope you're really using it to its fullest to make your sites stronger, more stylish, and just better. So thank you very much, everybody. I hope you have a great day and take care. Bye.